Our sermon today is called The Path to the Dark Side. The Path to the Dark Side. And I'm going to uh, say a short prayer to take us into the sermon. Father, we love you today. We praise you. Lord, as we open up your word and we look in its pages and read what you are speaking to us through the pages of the Bible. Lord, I pray today that you would open up our hearts and our minds to receive what you telling us today what the Holy Spirit sends to us. And uh, Lord, I pray that we would take your word and bear it deep in our heart, let it take root and grow, and uh, at some point in the future to come out again to help other people. A uh, river of living water to quench the thirst. And um, Lord, I just uh, pray today that you would enrich us with a better understanding of your word and our purpose in this world. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, good. Sheila's got us all set up there. Path to the dark side. And uh, so, um, so Pastor Yoda, he has his own little sayings. Uh, you know, if you watch the movies, these are these are some quotes from the movie. And sometimes Pastor Yoda gets it close, but not quite lining up with the scriptures. But you know, credit where credits do. Whatever. So, Yoda in the movie, there was a point where Yoda said, and it's a quote from a movie, if you like Star Wars, you'll recognize it immediately. And I'm going to do it in the Yoda voice if you're not offended by that. I'm not offended. Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. And hate leads to suffering. That's pretty good Yoda voice, Lenny. Yeah, all right. <laughs> All right, yeah, there we go. So that's that's a quote from the movies, and you probably recognize that. And so he's saying, fear on the left. If you have fear, it later will show up in your life as anger, and then later it transforms into hate and then suffering. If you watch the movie, uh, he was... Um, the Anakin Skywalker kind of walked this line and lived this line. That was kind of the story of his life. He had fear that he was going to lose Padme, and then he had anger because the uh, um, the Sand People killed his mother, and he hated them. And then, of course, all the things that came later in the movie when he became Darth Vader, he suffered, and everybody suffered as around him. Now that's of course fiction. That's from the from the from the films and from the Star Wars universe. But you know what he's talking about here is a progression of something where you're going from one place to another place in life. We're talking about the path to the dark side here, and this is the path that Anakin walked. He started out as a Jedi and he ended up as a Sith Lord. Oh, but he walked that line that. You know, they laid out for him in the film, and Yoda knew that what that line was for him. Well, the Bible talks about a similar kind of progression for us, for us people. And it's a progression that takes us from one place in life to another place in life. And that's from James chapter 1. I quote from a lot of different translations of Scripture, just whichever one says it best, as long as it ain't. Uh, contrary to, to the original intent and meaning. So this is from the what's called the International Standard Version, James 1, 14 to 16. Now let me go ahead and read it for you. It says, Each person is tempted by his own desire, being lured and trapped by it. And when that desire becomes pregnant, it gives birth to sin. And when that sin grows up, it gives birth to death. Do not be deceived. James chapter 1, in these three verses here, talks about a progression that takes place in the life of people if they walk that path. Now, Anakin, he walked a path that led him to become Darth Vader. And, and it was a choice that he made. He didn't have to walk that path. He made choices that led him down that path. And here, James is talking about a path that we can walk down. We Perhaps some of us have walked down that path before. Maybe we're on that path right now. 
but it's a series of choices that kind of have a snowball effect in our life. Each each choice that we make builds and leads on another and leads forward, and and so we can trust the scripture to tell us where we're going to end up. And that first starting point is where it says each person is tempted by his own desire. Everybody say desire. 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 Now, if you have a, a, some translations of scripture like a King James, I grew up on King James and think King James and search King James. It uses, anybody know what the word is? It uses the word lust. Some other translations do that too. Each person is tempted, led away by his own lust. That's a desire that we have for something that we shouldn't have. It's bad for us. Maybe it belongs to someone else. We, if we left after a possession. Uh, uh, covet is another word the Bible uses. If we want something that we're not entitled to. We might covet it. It's our lust. It's it's that desire within us for something bad. And it starts with that desire. We are lured away by something. We see something that we want and we shouldn't have it. Maybe the reason we can't have it is we can't afford it. Maybe if we had enough money we could go buy it and be okay. But, you know, if you want something and you can't have it, it may be because you can't have it because you can't afford it or you can't have it because it would hurt you or it would be harmful to people around you. Maybe maybe other people, family members in your life would be, would be ashamed if you had that thing. But you want it anyway, you know. Desire and lust is where this path starts. And the scripture says we are lured by it. And we are also becoming trapped by it. Sometimes just it becomes the object of our desire and we focus on it instead of focusing on family members or, or loving our neighbor or whatever. There's other things that we should be doing, but it becomes a trap for us. And it says when that desire becomes pregnant. Everybody say the word pregnant. 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 When the desire becomes pregnant, Pregnant, it gives birth to sin. So this is a pathway. It's a, it's a process. And there's something, one of the reasons that I chose the International Standard Version of the Scripture today to talk about this is it did use that word pregnant. Now for, for people, we get pregnant and a baby grows inside the, the mother and then the mother gives birth. And we know that that's a process that takes a while, right? How long does it take? Nine months. And the reason that this, that James uses this language about pregnancy and giving birth is because this is not a process that's over like that. There's a process from desire or lust to sin to death. And, you know, some people will say, oh, yeah, you can be a Christian all your life. And then you can go out and do this sin and you die and boom, you've lost your salvation and you're doomed because of one bad choice in a split second of time. And that's not right. When we live for Christ and we have a, a, a long time with Him, one instant split decision is not going to cause you to get out of God's will. Now, you know what? It's not the right thing to do. Maybe, you know, if you, like, you imagine you're driving a car and uh, something happens, a traffic accident, and, and, you know, you're going to be leaving this world in 15 seconds because you're going to have a collision and you're going to die. Maybe in the last 15 seconds you go, ah, and you, you scream out a profanity word, yeah. Uh, that's not going to, you're going to lose your salvation over that. That's a split second thing, okay? We're talking about a process that takes a long time. It's like a sore. You know, you get a scratch and you get an infection, but you're not going to die from that infection today. You know, but if you ignore it, you don't treat it, you don't put some antibiotics on it, you don't clean the wound and all that, then after a period of time, it'll start to, the infection will spread, and then it'll start to fester, and then, you know, real damage is happening. And then maybe eventually you get gangrene and then you can die from even just a small little cut if you ignore it. 
It's a process. It takes a long time. And that's what James here is trying to say. If you are a, a, a Christian and you have you know, a good relationship with the Lord, you can start down this path. And if you ignore the symptoms and you ignore the problem, you, you become entrenched in it. It begins to fester. And it will reach that next stage. Come on in if you want to. Welcome. And it's a process that leads to sin. Now, when he's talking about sin, yeah, if you if you have that instant moment and, uh, you know, ah, or you make a wrong decision at some point, there's sin there. But what James here is talking about is a pattern, a, a, a pattern of sin. You know, it's like that thing that, as a Christian, we know we shouldn't be doing, but it's like, well, this ain't going to hurt. And you, you kind of hide that part of your life away. Because you don't want your family to find out. You don't want your friends to know. You do it and you think, it's not going to hurt me. But it's just something that goes on and on and on. You return to it on a weekly basis, a daily basis. Maybe every couple hours you got to take a little peek or you got to take a little drag or whatever you got to do. It's something you come back to. And if you allow that and you ignore that, then you are walking down this path that's going to take you to the next step. Come on in if you want to. Y'all welcome. Each person is tempted by his own desire and lured. And when that desire becomes pregnant, it gives birth to sin. It goes to the next level. You know, there's a long time in the movie when Anakin was, you know, looking for that way that he could save Padway. He was he had fear and then he had anger and he seemed helpless, and he stuck with it, you know, and he just kept walking down that path. At any time, he could have decided, no, I'm not going to go that way. And he could have stopped. But if you keep on and keep on, and you make this, this sin, you allow it to be in your life, and you allow it to fester, then eventually, when sin grows up, again, growing up, you go from a child to an adult. That's a process that takes a long time. But if you ignore that sin and it keeps going, it keeps going, then eventually it will lead to your death and not, not, not just a physical death. We don't we all do that. It could lead to a spiritual death. If you let this sin reign in your body and you don't deal with it, it's a process. We're talking about a process here. Path to the dark side. Let's move on to another scripture here, another uh Another, another quote of Yoda. Pastor Yoda. This one maybe is not as quite well known. Not quite well known. I think this one was from episode three. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Attachment leads to jealousy. The shadow of greed, that is. Anybody remember that quote? It's another process. Another another thing that can take place, that can transition from one place to another, take you from one place in life to another. Attachment, and then there's the arrow you can see there, leads to jealousy, and then jealousy leads to greed. And in the movie, I think you saw this when uh, Anakin had turned to Darth Vader and he fights Obi-Wan on the, on the lava planet, you know, Mustafar, and Basically, he's talking about my empire. You know, I I own it all. That's greed showing up. You know, that's where it showed up in the movie. He had an attachment, and the attachment was to the. He wanted to attach himself to the power. And what did they say in the movie? When they got power, you you fear to lose it, right? You're jealous because maybe somebody else is going to get some power, and then it, you you. Be, become greedy. This is this is this is Yoda's thinking process here. It's another thing that shows up in the Star Wars movie. And you know, it's it's a good thought and it's close to something that's in the Bible. It's not quite not quite on the mark, but it's pretty close. So where we can find stuff this other process like this is in Romans chapter eight. Now I got it in here twice if you see in the bullets and I got it uh, the same verse in two different places, but I'm underlining the important parts here for for the point, okay? So I'm just going to read the underlying parts in the scripture the first time. Romans chapter 8, selected sections of verses 5 and 6, and this is from the CEV, the Contemporary English 
version. Verse 5, it says, People who are ruled by their desires only think of themselves. Verse 6, if our minds are ruled by our desires, we will die. So we're talking about a process that the Bible talks about that's a little bit close to what uh, Pastor Yoda was saying there. He said, if you are ruled by your desires, see that on the left, that leads to being selfish, thinking only of yourself. And it says, verse 6, if our minds are ruled by our desires, then we will die. That is another one of those processes that the scripture talks about. And so, of course, Star Wars is fiction. The Bible is real. It's real knowledge and information to help us get through life. And one way to go down this path that leads to death is to be ruled by our desires. And when you are ruled by your desires, you think only of yourself, and it doesn't matter about other people. You know, Jesus said we should love one another, love our neighbor as ourself. And that is in contrary to what we're talking about here. If you want to love your neighbor truly, then you have to prefer your brother. You have to put other people ahead of your own needs. And you have to help them if you can People who are ruled by their desires think of only themselves. If we if we only think about, you know, what what I'm going to enjoy today, you know, the, the comforts of for me, if that's the only thing we think about, then we're not thinking about other people. We're not helping other people. We don't have we don't have any any thought for someone else. We become selfish. And if you're ruled by your desires, you will die. It's a spiritual type of death that we're talking about there. Now, Pastor Yoda sometimes gets it dead wrong. Yoda in the movie, he sometimes gets it dead wrong. And here is a saying that he said in the movie that I thought, no, there's, this is not a scriptural thing. I understand where he's coming from. But it's contrary to the word. Listen to what he says here. Once you start... Oh, I'm sorry. I need to do it in the Yoda voice. Once you start down the dark path, forever will it dominate your destiny. Consume you, it will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. So, Yoda here in this little sin, and he says, you know, once you start... And he's talking to his Jedi... That he's training and he says, you know, if you give in to your desires and you start down that dark path, it, you're, you're, there's no way you can recover from that. And when you look at, you know, Anakin in the movie, they kind of painted him that way. He kind of gave in and gave in and gave in. And, and more and more he wore the dark clothing and then his face became dark and he didn't have a smile on his face hardly at all, you know, and he carried himself in that way that he was... He was he was bad, and nobody's gonna mess with him. You know, it it just it, it was an overshadowing of him. It consumed him. Later, even Yoda said, you know, he was consumed by Darth Vader, as though it's too late, it's gone, it's over. And of course, we know in the movie, even the movie showed that Anakin could come back from it. He just needed some help with it. That same verse that we just read, eight. Uh, Romans chapter 8, 5 through 6. Let me read the other parts that we didn't read the first time. So now the underlined parts from verse 5 and verse 6. It says, Everyone who is ruled by the Holy Spirit thinks about spiritual things. But if our minds are ruled by the Spirit, we will have life and peace. Later movies showed dark characters coming back to the light side or being tempted to come back to the light side. And if we allow ourselves to be ruled by God's Spirit, then the Scripture, the same Scripture that 
talked about a path to the dark side to death, selfish and everything. The same passage now talks about having a life in peace. At any time, if we find ourselves on that dark path heading down the wrong way, we can make a choice and choose to let God come in and let His Spirit rule us. And if He if you allow Him to do that, you take your foot off of this path that leads to the dark side, the sinful side, the side that leads to death, and you can take a step on the light side, a path back into God's family, a path back into happiness and joy that is available to all of us through God. It's a choice that we can make at any time. Now the devil will try to convince us that it's not possible. It's not possible. For those of us who are Christians already, the devil tries to convince us that, you know, this last sin that we've done, oh, God can never forgive you that, you know. And he does his best to say that it's too late for you. Get you believing like, you know, Yoda would say in the movie, it's just going to consume you. It's too late for you. Forever it's going to dominate your destiny. And that's simply not the case. God is more powerful than any sin. It is more powerful than any temptation. There's a scripture that says that God makes a way of escape from any temptation. Sometimes, oh, it can be so strong, but if we allow ourselves to be led by the Spirit, if we let our actions be ruled by God's Spirit, then He will lead us to a life and peace, a pathway that goes in the other direction from death and sin. Our last scripture today, Hebrews chapter 11, and this is from a translation called ERV. It's an easy-to-read verse. It says, Without faith, no one can please God. Whoever comes to God must believe that He is real and that He rewards those who sincerely try to find Him. We're talking about these progressions, and here's the last one we're going to look at, okay? For someone who has never accepted Christ as their Savior. If you've never had a moment when God ruled your heart and his spirit ruled over your desires and you gave yourself over to him so that you wanted to you wanted your life to belong to him. If you've never done that before, here's the progression that it has to take. It says whoever comes to God must believe that he is real. Everybody say real. Real. Now I've talked to a lot of people who says, you know, I mean, I can see all the stuff in the world. I can see all the trees. I can see the stars and everything. It's just hard to believe that there's a God that made all that, you know. They can't come to the concept that God is real. But if we open our minds for a moment to consider the possibility that God exists, some people have this moment, they say, well, God, if you'll show yourself to me, then I'll believe in you. <laughs> now, be careful what you ask for. That's my motto in life. Be careful what you ask for, because you might get it. <laughs> and if you say that to God, God, if you'll show me you're real, I'll believe in you. Buckle your seatbelts and get ready for a roller coaster ride. If you have to, if it takes a roller coaster to get you believe, he'll put you on. What's the fastest roller coaster in Orlando? Is there a big one that like everybody goes? I mean, whatever that one would be, that's the one that you're going to be on. And you're going to be in the, not the back, well, what's worse, the front seat or the back seat? They're what? They're the same? They're about the same. They're about the same. You know, if you're going up the big hill, and you're, in that, right. you're in that front seat and you can't see the ground or nothing. That's pretty scary. But if you're in the back, man, just whipping you around, you're getting the, the physics of that last car is just something. That's that's usually you're gonna you better hold on to your lunch, right? Because it's going it's going you're gonna see it again. I always kind of favored the back a little bit because if I can keep my eyes on where that track's going. That helps. 
But if you say, God, if you'll just show me that you're real, then I'll believe in you. Get ready for a roller coaster ride, because that's what you're asking for. Be careful what you ask for, and you might get it. But the first step is you got to consider the possibility that God exists. You got to say, you know, I know God's real. I don't. I don't have a relationship with Him, but I know He's real. You ever heard anybody say say that? Maybe we said that to ourselves at some point in the past. Again, it's a progression. It's like that. Getting pregnant, it's a long process. Or growing up, it's a long process. Now, I, I, I love it when somebody makes a decision for Christ and you get to see them go all the way from I'm a, I'm a sinner and I don't believe to now they're confessing God as their Savior. I mean, I love to see that. But I think it's true more often than not that it's a long progression. God works on us little at a time. And maybe we go from one place in life to another place in life, and it's that long process. And I respect the process, and I like to be part of the process. And that means that somebody comes in, you know, our life, maybe it's out here at the booth, and they come in, and, oh, no, I don't believe, I believe in all this other stuff and everything, but, you know, we plant the seed. Well, maybe God does exist. And, you know, we don't never see that person again. You know, we got a chance maybe to nudge them in the right direction. There's that scripture, you know, that one plants and one waters, but it's God that brings increase. I like to be part of that process. I don't care which end. If I'm at the front end of that or at the rear end of that or somewhere in the middle, I don't care. Because I know God's working on them, and, and maybe they're on this path. But the first step is you got to believe that He is real. And the second step in this process once you accept that, you know, God, maybe God's real after all. Maybe God does exist. Then the next place you have to go on this path is you've got to understand that the, He has a reward that is waiting for anybody that's willing to take a step closer. He rewards those who sincerely try to find Him. Now you might go, you know, I'm... I believe God's out there. I don't know who He is, but, you know, I want to learn more. When you make that decision and you say, I want to learn more and you want to get closer to God, then He has rewards to guide us along the way. And, you know, we, those rewards come in all the strangest shapes and things. Maybe, maybe as a child you wished for a thing. And then it came true. And then, for me, this was actually kind of a real thing. When I was young, I used to love trains, you know, locomotive, toy trains, host scale, and had a sheet of plywood with the train tracks nailed to it. And I used to love trains. And we lived close to some train tracks, and sometimes we'd see the trains going by, and I'd wonder, you know, all the stuff that was loaded on those cars, where are they going? You know, what are they hauling? And then in my in that, my hometown where I grew up, there was a there was a bridge across a river. And that bridge, when I was came along, it was a hundred years old, and it was it was weak, and they wouldn't run any trains across it. You know, and as a little boy, it's like you know, I'd really like to see that, I'd really like to see a train go across that bridge. When I got to be a teenager, about to graduate high school, they decided to fix that bridge up because it could save them some miles on on hauling coal. They were hauling coal out of the mountains. And lo and behold, as a teenager, I got to see a train go across that train bridge. And I remembered back. You know, as a little boy, I used to wish for that. And here it is. As a little boy, I mean, that's a silly, foolish thing. But it was one of those little rewards. It's like God said, I was listening, and I heard you talking even way back then. Seems like small, but little rewards that come along. Maybe something that you've been wishing for. You didn't have enough money, you couldn't afford it, and then one day you pulled up to a yard sale and there was the thing that you're looking for. It's too expensive, but you got it for a dollar or something, you know? I remember the first time I had a, I got my guitar and I found this little block of wood with a wire coming out of it. I thought, what's that? And it was a quarter. And I picked it up and I was going to use it for some electronic project or something. And I had a knife around that cord ready to cut that cord. And I thought, no, I'll wait and do that later. Come to find out, it was a piece of uh, musical equipment, a sound pickup for a guitar, and they were like $100. And I got one for a quarter and didn't even know it for a long time. 50 cents, 50 cents. 
Anyways, it's just like little rewards that will come along the way. And when those rewards start to be, you know, that maybe you got to hear words from somebody that you really needed to hear, somebody that maybe you had heard a long time ago and you needed forgiveness for that, those are rewards that may come your way. Things like that, there's, there's, there's rewards that you just can't put your finger on. But when they happen, you know, God, that was just for me. Nobody else knew that I had that desire. Nobody else knew, but God knows. You have to believe that He exists. And then you have to believe that God rewards those who are seeking Him. And that you're going to see those rewards. You might not see them today. You might not see them for a long time. But when you see them, God is revealing Himself more and more. A long process it might be. But if you are looking for something, if you're looking for God, Scripture also tells me to seek and you will find. And when you find God, if you started out as you didn't even believe in God, and now you, you said, yeah, well, maybe He's real, and then you got to see some of those rewards, you finally got to that point in life where you find God. And you get to that point where you're on your knees and you're saying, God, I know you're real and I, I want to serve you and please forgive me of my sins. When you find God, that's when you find your salvation. That's when God finds you and gives you that salvation. This is a process for some people. It might take years. And I love to see it when somebody comes to an altar and gets saved just like that. And it does happen. But I also respect the process that God has, that this can be a long, enduring, thought-out thing. So, you know, coming to cons and when people come by our booth and we talk to people, I don't know where people are on their journey. I, I'd like to think they're on the journey where they're heading towards the light side, a place of life and peace, a place where salvation is within their grasp. I'd like to think that they're on that journey. And if I can... Help them along the journey a little bit. That's that's where my place in life is, is to help others find their way. If you're in a place in your life where you're on a path, only you can tell, only you can say if you're on a path that is leading to the dark side or if you're on a path that's leading to light. Only you can say that. And all of us in a few minutes are going to walk out of this room and maybe we'll, you know, maybe we'll never see each other again in life and God takes us in different directions. And we might not have a chance to talk again or maybe we'll see each other a lot. I'd like that. And if I don't find out from talking to you what path you're on, you know, it's, it's, it's really just between you and God anyway as to what path that you're on. I want to point you in the right path and I want to help you along the way if I can. But only you know. And so only you at this time can be honest with yourself and say, you know, I'm not in a place where I ought to be. I'm heading down a path in the wrong direction. Or you can say, you know, I'm ready to take that next step in the right direction. Only you know that. But for this time that it is right now that God has given to us. We have an opportunity to move in one direction or another. Either do an about face and start heading the right way or take another step down the path of the right way. If we walk out of this room and we're on the wrong path and we decide not to do anything about it, you know, it's like that sore that's going to fester. So I encourage everybody in here to, you know, just pause for a moment and think about, you know, where am I on my path and which direction am I heading and, and where do I want to go from here? Because God's ready to meet you at where you are and not force you along, but to help you to the next place. Help you turn around if you need to. So let's just take a moment and uh, think about that. We're gonna, I'm going to close in a word of prayer. If anybody would like to change the direction of their path, this is the time to think about that. Let's all close our eyes just for a second. Is there anybody in here and you're honest with yourself and you say, I'm on this path and it's not a path that I should be going down. 
slip your finger up or something just to let God know that that is something that's concerning to you, that you want to go on a different path. I'm not going the direction I need to. All right, put your hands up. If there's anybody here that's on a path and they're like, you know, I'm stuck. I really want to go forward in a way. I want to pray with you. Don't want to embarrass anybody here, but I'm going to close this in a word of prayer, and we're going to thank God for what has happened here today. We're going to thank God for what's in the Bible and the Scripture, and but we're going to dismiss. And if you held up your hand, I want you to take a minute and just come up here and let's let's talk a little bit after everybody has uh, left or start to pack up or whatever. She was going to help them pack up, whatever. Just come up for a minute. Let's let's talk about that, and let's let's see what God has in store and what direction He's going to send us in. All right, dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you today. And Lord, this is a time for honesty in ourselves, Lord. And Father, thank you that for whatever path that we are on, Lord, you are watching out for us. You want us to go in the right direction, and you don't want to throw those lightning bolts down on us and and cause us any more harm, but you want to see us be the best person that we can be and be on our in the best place in life that we can be. And Father, you want us to come and embrace you and embrace the path to the light side. So Father, I just pray right now for each person that's in this room. And Lord, I pray that as we go our separate ways, Father, that, uh, that you will uh, carry us down the path to our next place in life and help us to receive those rewards and to recognize that you are being a part of our lives and you're taking us where you want us to be. So Father, we love you today. We praise you. Lord, I hope that the worship that we've given you today has put a smile on your face. And Lord, we just uh, pray that as we carry on through the day that we can touch someone else. Give us an opportunity to tell someone else about what God has done for us in our lives and to tell them about Jesus. Lord, we love you and praise you and ask these words in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I hope I see all of you at the table today, but those that held their hands up, come on up here and let's, let's uh, talk a little bit more. God bless you. We love you. And I'm going to say goodbye to you all in Tennessee. So I can just see mom, but I'm waving at you and waving it all at you. All right. Yep. Love you. And we'll talk to you later, okay? God bless you.